It is another Tech Tuesday coming your way, and today in episode eight, I want to talk about Turnitin.com. And for all of you teachers that carry those stacks and piles of papers home with you to grade and lab reports and writing samples and all of those things, those days are done and over. Turnitin.com offers us a whole lot of information and tools and tips uh, and tricks to uh, make that assessment uh, and feedback a whole lot more direct and a whole lot more um, efficient for students uh, and for teachers. So we're going to dive in and take a look at some of those tools. This is only a very short version of what Turnin.com can do for us. Uh, please, if you want more information and more things, mark March 7th on your calendar. That is the Technology Sandbox, and we'll be talking a little bit more particularly and looking at Turnitin.com in that Technology Sandbox session. So let's dive in and talk a little bit about what we want to accomplish here today. We want to look at Turnitin.com as something much more beyond uh, just a plagiarism checker. While that is a tool that they offer, it is not the only thing that Turnin.com can do for us. In fact, it's only a very small piece of what Turnin.com can do for teachers across the curriculum. This is not just a tool for English teachers. Uh, as a social studies teacher, I use this a lot, and uh, it was for every writing assignment, big and small. Uh, we want to talk about how we can develop tools for effective student feedback that can promote learning, growth, and instructional adaptations for what we're doing in our classroom. And let's look at the places in the curriculum where we can promote writing and where we can promote peer feedback and self-reflection via Turnitin.com. Those tools are quite powerful, and we want to take a look at them in particular. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a few pieces before we start that, uh, especially uh, what it can do beyond those plagiarism checkers. So uh, yes, it can create originality reports, and yes, it can help us identify plagiarism. It's a primary tool that, that, that it offers, but it also <clears throat> allows us to grade the papers. It allows us to give feedback on the papers. Uh, it allows us to type in-text comments. If we were writing those comments on paper, well, now we can type them in and put a little thought bubble right next to where it goes. Uh, we can drag quick marks over into the paper for those common mistakes that are made over and over and over again. Uh, we can provide audio feedback. We can record an audio comment, or we can provide extended written feedback that the student would be able to access when they log into Turnitin.com on the student side. I think one of the most powerful features is the ability to use rubrics and grade uh, against rubrics and use feedback within rubrics. Um, we're not talking about score sheets. We're not talking about, you know, this section only has this many points and I get to tell you which number of points you got. No, it's, you know, this standard, you meet this standard or you exceed this standard or you're approaching this standard and it allows us to use the rubrics that we create or rubrics that are already created for us in the system uh, and use that to assess writing. Uh, there's the grammar checker, which is far more powerful than Microsoft Word or any other word processor. But this is the key part. Now we can take our data that we've gathered. It's more than just a score in the grade book. That score now means something as we parcel out that data and take that to our PLCs for conversations uh, and for improving student learning. When we look at writing across the curriculum. We've talked about this a lot. We've talked about this before uh, for many, many years. But, you know, writing across the curriculum, it's, it's more than just English classes. It's more than just writing happens in all of our classes. It promotes learning. Uh, it integrates the process of writing and writing itself, um, student participation and diversity of voices, and it engages students as critical thinkers. Writing is thinking. Writing is the product of thinking, uh, and it allows us to say we're going to dive into the texts and resources that we're using. It integrates disciplines. It gives students a chance to write in every class to develop that good, positive, powerful skill of writing. Um, it is part of instruction that can be used everywhere. Uh, and when we practice and the thinking and the writing conventions that go into academic writing, Students communicate effectively and are set up for success in the future. So 
we maybe it's time for us to consider again this idea of writing across the curriculum but it is an important piece and, and turnin.com helps us integrate that assessment of writing that we're using uh, and gives us a lot more data to have conversations about with our colleagues and in our PLCs and even as a school community. So we're going to dive into turnin.com here in a bit, but you know, one of the things I want to talk about real quickly is you create a class, then you add assignments, you get your students enrolled with the class ID and enrollment key, but then once you have that class created, you've got to give them something to submit. There are four different types of assignments that you can create for students to submit. Paper assignment is the standard, hand it in when it's done, get it to the teacher. The peer mark assignment is used after you've created a paper assignment and now you're going to want to set, have students do peer evaluation. And you can set up some extensive peer evaluation tools to use in that process. Then Another assignment you can create is, an, is a revision assignment. So they would have their original paper assignment, their peer mark assessment and feedback from peers, then then hopefully they could do a revision of that original assignment and submit that. And then when that whole process is done, you might ask them to do another assignment, which is a reflection, a self-reflection on the work and the learning that they've done with that particular project. So there's a lot of different things that we can add but you can't do a peer mark assignment or revision assignment or a reflection assignment until you've done the original paper assignment. That is the base assignment for everything else. So you have to create that first. And once that's created, if you want to do more with that, you can create one of those other three. But we're going to dive in and show you what, that peer, what all of those features look like and that grading and assessment feature in particular as we flip over into turnitin.com. Let's walk through some of these uh, features on Turnitin.com from a teacher's perspective and uh, looking particularly, like I said, at the uh, grading and feedback piece uh, and some of the other tools that are available uh, to help us as teachers. I'm going to use an old class uh, from my AP Government and Politics sections um, from my previous school. So if you see the word Blue Valley High, that's why it's on there. I'm uh, using some of my old classroom uh, data and classroom features to show you what this looks like. Now, if I'm a teacher and I've got my pieces turned in, uh, and this is the screen that I get to so I can see what's been submitted and what hasn't, um, I'm going to now get into the grading feature. Uh, and we're going to look at the final argumentative research paper. In this case, uh, it was an important part of uh, our social studies uh, work. And um, this here, if we click on the view, it takes us to where we can see all of our student information. Uh, we can see our students and we can see the title of the paper, the similarity pieces. You'll see the grade after, um, after you've graded it. But we'll take a look at one particular one uh, to show you what that looks like on the screen. So, um, since it's in read-only mode, it's an old course, we're disregarding that. But if we take a look at these buttons over here on the side, uh, you can see that there's a bunch of different layers that we have. We have the grading layer, there's the similarity layer that we can put on top of that, and then there's the e-rater layer, which looks at grammar uh, and usage issues. So if we're scrolling through the paper, uh, we can see, well, here's the article error, there's a spelling issue perhaps, uh, but at the same time, it's also telling us that we've got some, uh, if we have any sort of similarity issues, you know, where that ends up uh, showing up. And, and that gives us our, our plagiarism score, for lack of a better term. But that gives us some of those pieces. We can see where that similarity is. You can see that uh, my student here has done a pretty good job uh, in terms of citing. Uh, we don't have a lot of issues with similarity pieces. Uh, if we look at the grammar checker, uh, it's very interesting because it'll allow us to see uh, pretty quickly. If we look at grammar, here are the different issues that we're running into with grammar. Here are the different issues we're running into with mechanics, uh, the issues that might have to do with style, uh, the issues that might have to do with usage uh, in language, and then, of course, spelling. So. 
uh, it's much more significant of a grammar checker for students uh, than um, Microsoft Word or any other sort of uh, word processing uh, program. But the part that really always intrigues me and I think is the most significant is the ability to use uh, these feedback tools. Uh, and here you have something called Quick Marks. Uh, and in Quick Marks, you can actually have particular parts if you want to use format. You know, they've got particular pieces for format uh, that are already loaded in here. You can actually change your quick marks, uh, but we're going to stick with commonly used. Um, and, you know, if I've got a weak transition, what I can do is actually grab that. If this, is, if this were a live paper, I could grab that weak transition and put it over here. This then gives them some information in terms of what you know a weak paragraph transition would look like or uh, if I have you know a situation where uh, informal style is being used improper citation you know there's all kinds of different pieces we can add here uh, and drag them over uh, now we can also uh, leave a voice comment uh, this is a key feature for me uh, when I use this a lot if I had students that you know, rather than typing a whole bunch of stuff, I may have been more of a, a conversation with the students. I could click voice comment, hit record, it uploads, and then the students would get this feedback when they log back into Turnitin.com. Turnitin.com is a two-way communication between teacher and student in order to give the feedback that students need to be successful. Another way you can do that is with the text comment. So they would log back in, they would see your text comment that you've typed in here about their paper, it saves it, it uploads that, and now they have the access to that uh, if they need and if they want. Uh, and then this is the one that we used the most, uh, and this was the rubric feature. So we created a rubric, uh, and it was a common rubric that was used. Uh, you can use ones that exist for that cover the common core state standards. Um, for writing or for different things uh, or you can create your own and then we created our own and as we looked at these papers you know if we saw that there was a comment um, and then we dragged something over here and we associated that with a rubric you can see I can look at this comment uh, and go right to that particular comment uh, that I've typed in here and now I can associate that with a score on the rubric. Uh, and so this begins to give us a heck of a lot more information and more so it gives the students more information. You know, this student did not perform particularly well uh, with this counterclaim uh, and then they were able to see why and where and what they needed to do to revise and resubmit. Uh, so there's a lot more than just plagiarism checker. This is a feedback tool and this allows us to use quick marks and text comments and rubric grading to really give that information. So that would be what the student would see on their paper but this is an important part too for PLC conversations. Once we've graded all of this or assessed all of this now we can uh, get a grade mark report and there's lots of things we can do in here. We can look and see what the you know what quick marks were used if we had you know a number of errors that were uh, being identified in the commonly you know in usage and format um, you know in composition those kinds of things we can look at the e-rater marks so what what's our what are we really struggling with as um, you know in our writing uh, you can actually then take this and export that form uh, and when you export that form it goes into an Excel spreadsheet uh, and so you could have some amazing PLC conversations you know where you were looking you don't even have to look at students in particular you could completely delete um, you know all of this information and uh, you then can look at you know issues of grammar well we had you know, out of this many students, out of 18 students, we had 72. Uh, we, we were struggling with, you know, grammar, perhaps. You know, if we have 72 uh, in terms of mechanics, you know, out of those 18 students, we had 146 issues with mechanics, with style, 
we had 29 issues. Usage, we had 240 issues. So if I'm an English teacher or if I'm teaching writing in my course or I want to teach these communication skills and strategies, I can use this information to say in this one class, you know, usage reports were a particular issue. And we need to go back and, and look at those pieces. You can also, uh, when we look at <clears throat> what you can get here, and this was always the most formative for PLCs, is, is the rubric. Uh, and when you look at rubrics, in, you've got a common rubric, you can now look and see, all right, well, here's all of my students. If we are looking at claim, uh, we want to be able to see you know, where students are performing uh, and what are they doing. This, we can rank it by, you know, we can sort it by claim, we can sort it by evidence, we can sort it by connections, conventions, we can download all of this information and really aggregate as much of this as we can uh, to then have conversations in our PLCs. But really, the data that we can get from Turnitin.com is quite significant. Uh, and it's not just for English teachers, and it's not just for originality checks and plagiarism checks. It's for student growth, it's for formative assessments, it's for learning through feedback. Uh, and I look forward to working with anybody that needs some help or some tips or some tricks on Turnitin.com. But there's a lot of pieces that we can gain from our use of Turnitin.com. Well, I certainly hope that this gives you a little bit more in terms of tools and ways to use Turnitin.com uh, and move it beyond just a plagiarism checker. Uh, there are so many more tools than just that, though that is very effective. Uh, and hopefully this gave you an opportunity to look at ways that we can provide students with effective feedback that promotes learning, that promotes growth, and then allows us to use that data and create some instructional adaptations as we grow and we are working in our classrooms. Uh, and hopefully it also gives us an opportunity to, to, to look at ways that we can create writing assignments, but also use peer feedback and encourage self-reflection and revision in the work that we're doing with writing with our students. Uh, again, hopefully you can see that writing is across the curriculum. I think we already know that, but maybe this gives us an opportunity to recommit and gives us an, a tool to use to provide that effective, focused, and growth-oriented feedback uh, for students so that we can uh, help them become better writers and us to become better teachers. That's it for now. Have a great, wonderful Tuesday. We'll see you next time.